Welcome to another daily episode of SAP Analytics Cloud. This time, we will take a look at the new Value Driver Tree widget and some of the new features. So remember last time we created a Value Driver Tree based on the income model. So we're going to do the same quickly again. We're going to create the model based on the accounts that we had, and we're going to upload quickly data. So basically go in, we create a new model. We will start with a blank model. As you can see, we have dimension version. Then we're going to add the dimension for the accounts. And we're going to reuse the accounts like we did last time from our spreadsheet. And then we're going to go in and actually configure the dimension for the calendar month. So we basically have a very simple model. And then we're going to configure quickly the planning properties to make sure that the dimension for the month is recognized as the time dimension for planning. So then we're going to upload the data. So we're going to use the spreadsheet. And we're going to then use the second sheet for the data upload. And we're going to quickly assign the different columns. So we're going to map the versions. We're going to assign the calendar month, the accounts, and the measure. And then we can finish the data upload. So now with the data upload finished, or you can actually start creating our story. And this is the first major difference. The new value driver tree widget allows you to create the value driver tree directly in the story. So here we are, we're choosing our model. And the first thing we're going to do is we configure a few defaults. So what we would like to do is allow the user to switch between actual and budget. And we want to have a comparison of actual and budget in every single node. So as you can see, we do have the ability to create cross calculations. So we add the first cross calculation, which would be the choice that the user made. So we're going to create a restricted measure. So the account values is basically a representation of all the different accounts you created, then the version. And in this case, we're going to put an input control on the version so that the user can at runtime choose which version they would like to see. So we give the two options, actual and budget, make it a single selection, and we're good. So as you can see on the right hand side, we have the input control. And because we configured it as part of the default configuration, all our nodes will have this configured. So now we also want to have a variance between actual and budget. So we're going to quickly create two restricted measures, one for the actual version and one for the budget version. As the measure, we always use the account values and then we use the actual versus the budget, and we're going to create another calculation where we create the difference. So then, in addition to just showing the normal value for each node, each node will also show the variance of the actual versus the budget values in a second row, which is again something that is new for the new widget 
for the value driver tree. So now we've got all the calculations. We can also then do some quick formatting. So we're going to configure the decimals. Again, this will impact all the nodes that we have. And then we're also going to remove the filter for the version so that our value driver tree acts on the input control. Now we simply generate our complete value driver tree and here it is, like you've seen before. So let's zoom in into one part of the value driver tree. In this case, this is the electricity. Let's do some configuration. We're going to change the node width. So you can see right now it shows the actual yearly values. Now, one of the items that you can do with the new widget as well is you can create a presentation date range. So you can also change the granularity. So for example, let's assume we want to do monthly values. So we could go down to the month and actually decide that we want to see these elements in the monthly granularity. This is really just for presentation. You can see it now shows every single month. So you can define actually the granularity as well with the new widget. So for visibility purposes, let's move to a quarter level. So here we are. We now have the quarterly level. And another very interesting feature is part of the new widget is that you can expand and collapse basically the nodes at runtime. So let's, for example, navigate to the car fuel expenses. So here we can go in and actually collapse all the car expenses. This doesn't mean that this is hidden, but actually the user can collapse them at runtime or expand again. And we also have the option to center a view. You can select a node and center everything around it. So now let's go back to the electricity item. And remember we created the option to switch between actual and budget. And we created a second row which shows the variance between actual and budget. So if we go in for Q2, change the value, in this case for budget, we should see a variance, not only for electricity, but actually all along the complete items in the value driver tree right now. So here you can see how our cross calculation works along the different nodes of our value driver tree. I hope this gave you a good idea of some of the new features of the new value driver tree widget, such as the ability to generate and modify a value driver tree directly in the story, the ability to add cross calculations, the ability to expand and collapse notes on the fly, center notes as part of your view, as well as the option to define a default node configuration so that you can configure certain items, including calculations, once, and your value driver tree will leverage that for each of the nodes. I want to say thank you for watching and listening.